There are only two kinds of countries, those who use the metric system and those who put a man on the moon. It's a popular argument on the internet and one I like to counter thusly. There are only two kinds of countries, those who subjugated all of continental Europe and those who didn't spread the metric system. That brings us to Napoleon Bonaparte and an interesting question. What system of measurement did the world use before the conquest of the first French emperor? Mr. Bonaparte was not a scientist. He was a general of some capacity, a brutal but talented politician and a bit of an amateur historian. Napoleon was particularly fond of Macedon's Alexander the Great and Rome's Gaius Julius Caesar, but there's no doubt he also wanted to emulate his predecessor on the French throne, Charlemagne. Charlemagne was a conqueror and a reformer like Napoleon, who introduced standard units of length and mass in an attempt to unite his newly formed empire. The main unit for mass within this system was the pound. The main unit for length within this system was the foot. If this surprises you, your surprise is not surprising, because those are exactly the names of two of the most important units in the modern imperial and US customary systems. Subsequent centuries saw other countries introduce their own systems of measurement, giving rise to, among others, the libra, the litre, the pfund, the punt, and the pond. Every single one of which literally translates to pound. These units and international versions of the foot, the inch, mile and many other units were all directly or indirectly based on that most prevalent of benchmarks, the human body. An inch equated to the width of a thumb, a foot to the length of, well, a foot, a cubit or L to the length of a forearm and so forth. No two human bodies are the same, however, which meant that not all of these units were the same across borders. Evidence of this inconsistency can still be seen today, making the gallon approximately 4.5 litres in every country that still uses the unit, except in the United States, where it measures roughly 3.5 litres instead. Having two different variations of the same unit is a bit inconvenient, but when the foot is also different in size between France and Britain, that same Napoleon Bonaparte we talked about earlier, who was approximately 170 tall, is often depicted as being 5 foot 2, which is, um, 157 in real units, or at least 5 foot 2 is 157 in English feet and inches. French feet and inches, or pied and pouce to give them their proper name, were longer by some margin, making the allegedly very short emperor actually perfectly Average for the time. Of course, Napoleon didn't use French feet, except the ones he was standing on, but old habits die hard. In the same way that Britain is still going through a gradual transition from imperial to metric, it took France decades as well. With the added pressure of Napoleon's conquests, however, the metric system did spread throughout Europe, with the notable exceptions of Russia, which only switched to metric in 1925, and Britain, which started metrication in 1965. Actually, Britain didn't switch to the metric system at all, but specifically to the SI system. This whole system came about as a result of some French mismanagement. Mismanagement may be a strong word, but there was a beautiful simplicity to the early metric system and subsequent decisions ruined. The original meter was defined as 0 0.0000000025 times the circumference of Earth, which had been approximated by Eratosthenes in antiquity and more closely calculated by Jean Picard in the 17th century. The other metric units were simply defined by the meter, from the litre to the kilo and eventually units like the newton, the joule and the watt. The world of trade couldn't work with these purely mathematical units, however, and needed physical objects to measure against, giving rise to the many standard kilograms still in existence today. Come the 20th century, though, it was discovered that these physical standards didn't precisely equal their mathematical definition, and so they were redefined in new mathematical ways, which extended even to the meter itself. It would be impossible to live in a world powered by nanotechnology without these newly redefined units having the precision they do, but I wish the French had never created physical standards so we could still have the gorgeous simplicity of the original metric system today. What I do not wish to have back, however, is a system that would make my body be measured as 6 foot 2 tall in Britain, 6 foot 6 in the Netherlands and 5 foot 8 in France, despite being the exact same body. To finish off, I will be nice to the people of Liberia and Myanmar, and even those of the US, by saying that the modern imperial system, while still riddled with problems, is at least mostly consistent across the places where it's used. Although, to be honest, that's probably just because it's been redefined in SI units these days, just like the metric system. If you liked this video, feel free to subscribe to Robert Explains, and if you hated it, feel equally free to spew vitriol at your leisure. Until next time.